world. Three techniques that um, we can use every day to stay centered, to get all the help we need, to keep from stressing ourselves out over what's going on in this crazy planet, and um, to just get on top of it, which is, you know, I a little background on me. Um, you know, I started flying back in 1967 with United Airlines, and um, a couple of my flying partners are here from the old days. Um, and we had a blast because the 60s was the golden age of aviation. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> that ended unless she had a private jet, but um, it was fun. And I flew for 35 years. And then it took me two years to find something else to do, but I became a Silva Ultramind trainer, teaching the work of Jose Silva. And um, people have gotten tremendous results from that being able to um, change their perception by getting down to that alpha level of consciousness. And then I worked for about six years in the Christian Science Church, giving tours, meeting people from all over the world, once again, and talking about metaphysics, because a lot of people don't know much about Mary Baker Eddy, but she had a spiritual awakening when she was in her 40s and rediscovered how Jesus healed and went on to found a global religion and the Christian Science Monitor when she was um, 87 years old or 88 and ended up um, you know, passing away a couple of years later, but everything she did was has lasted and she, she um, had some amazing insights into metaphysics, spirituality, and exactly how Jesus was able to do the things he did and we can do them too. So I've been fascinated by metaphysics and spirituality my whole life. I've always been a seeker and um, I always wanted to know the big answers to the big questions. What the heck are we doing here? How did we end up here? <laughs> what is it all about? So I've dug and dug and dug and um, explored many different avenues and reach the conclusion that you can get answers. I don't think I'll, I'll ever know all the answers, of course, because it's infinite, but the more we dig um, and the more we look for the, those answers, things show up in our lives. So, um, you know, the first thing I started really studying was learning how to control my mind. And Gurdjieff was my one of my first teachers. I read everything I could find about him because he re made me realize that if you can't control your thoughts by remembering yourself and observing your thoughts, you can be all over the map, you know, high one day, low the next, depending on what's happening in the external world. And that's not really a very fun place to be. It's fun when you're high, but it's not, it's not fun when you're low. So um, I really dug into him and he was a teacher who trained people all over the world that came to him in his centers in Fontainebleau, France, and then New York City. And I used to go to some Gurdjieff meetings with people that were studying his path. And then um, in my mid twenties, I had a dire prediction from a doctor that I was going to die by the time I was 40, if I didn't go have surgery the next week. And I did not like the sound of that at all because um, surgery was not my thing back then when I was in my 20s, nor was death. So I went to a healer and I had a spontaneous healing. And it took me a lot of contemplation and insight to figure out what the heck happened, but it was like everything changed. I went from being really, really scared, really frightened to totally free. It just was gone. You know, this dire doomsday prediction that I got evaporated. So then I really dug in and I started studying more and more, you know, teachings of metaphysics, spiritually based, the Bible, um, textbooks that were written by spiritual mystics, um, Christian mystics, they're all, they all had this insight that um, it's all consciousness. It's all consciousness. We live in a mental universe. So 
meditation is one way to practice and there's passive meditation and there's active meditation. The Silva training that I teach is active meditation, but passive meditation is very, very good in order to clear your mind. Um, just go to that place where you still your mind and you're not, you know, racing around mentally all day long. It's really good to have a meditation practice because meditation is about listening and attuning your thoughts so that when you need to get a message from the divine or an inspiration or revelation, it can come through. These messages don't come through if you're full of all kinds of crazy thoughts like anxiety, fear, depression, you know, that it blocks it. So it's good to meditate. And you know what Einstein said, you can't solve a problem at the same level of consciousness that you created it at. And that's why you need to shift your thought your mind to a different frequency. When you get to what they call the alpha level, where your brain is actually vibrating at a different frequency than when you're fully engaged with your five senses, like we are now, we're at beta. And that's what we use to function in the three-dimensional world. But when we go within into our subjective consciousness and we shift into that inner world, we go to alpha, which is more like 10 or 12 cycles per second. We slow our brain waves down. And when we do that, we're able to solve problems, think like a genius. That's how geniuses do it. They just tap into their inner wisdom, which is connected to the infinite intelligence called God or the universe or whatever you want to call it. And they know how to tap into that in order to do amazing things. We're all capable of it. But when you go within and you get to that level and you learn to do it on command, then when something comes up in your day-to-day -day life and you need a solution or you need a healing or you need to get along with someone better because you're having some friction, you remember to go within to either re reprogram the, the situation so that you get a solution or just become very calm and let the solution appear. But you can always reprogram your subconscious mind. We know that the subconscious is running the show. The programming that we get in the subconscious mind is what really is driving us every day to do what we do. And if we don't like the program, we can rearrange it by going within to that alpha level of consciousness and using creative visualization to start visualizing a better version of ourselves. And once you get the hang of it, it's fascinating the way it works. Things will just come to you from out of nowhere that you never imagined. Or if you're dealing with a situation that needs a solution, you effortlessly get the solution. It just shows up. And you can do this like in my lifetime, because I was a crew member for 35 years. <clears throat> One time I started adding up how many times I've moved and I got to 35. Now that doesn't mean I moved every year, every year of my flying career, but I mean, I had commuter apartments. I changed bases. You know, I, I flew bases all the way from Honolulu to New York and everything in between. So I would have to move every now and then, but it would always be effortless. You know, um, like I'll give you an example. One time I was sitting on an airplane in first class with Susan. We were going over to Honolulu to work temporary duty. We used to do that. We could go for, I don't know if it was three months or something. It was a short period of time but we could go be based there temporarily. So I'm sitting there with this other flight attendant that had agreed to go over and, you know, we're going to room together. And she was a nervous wreck worrying about where we were going to live. And I kept thinking, I'm not worried about it. It'll all fall into place. And sure enough, we landed, we went to in flight to tell them we were there. And we found out there was this adorable little house right near one of the best beaches in Honolulu that this other flight attendant wanted people to rent so she could go to the mainland for three months. And we got a little Volkswagen bug, we got the house all furnished 
And we even got to join the tennis club down the street for the period of time we were there. And it just fell into place. And I find every time I move, it's always like one phone call or, you know, or if I sell a house, it, it, you know, things just fall into place once you're in flow. And that's what meditating and getting down to that alpha level of consciousness where you've shifted into that peaceful place where none of it moves you. Then when you're living in flow, things just naturally unfold very harmoniously and you don't worry anymore. You know that the outcome will be good. Now, that's the key thing. If you're a naturally optimistic person, you expect good things to happen. But if you're naturally kind of pessimistic, you can be programming yourself for little upsets. So you need to do a mental house cleaning every now and then and clear out your consciousness. That's why it's good to go to workshops like the Silva training or go on a retreat or, you know, give yourself a change of scenery so that you can clear your mind um, when it gets stuck. Getting unstuck is very, very important for metaphysical people because they know we live in a mental universe and the physical is just the outer reflection of what we're thinking. We are creating our lives with our inner world moment to moment. And if we see something that we really don't want anymore in our life, metaphysical people know that it's not about changing what's out there. You have to go within and change your perception about things. And then you get results. Things will just automatically either fall away and new things will come into your experience. And that can be a problem for people. You know, I've had a number of people come to me over the years and they've said, you know, I want to take this next step in my spiritual path, but I know if I do, I'll lose my, my family, <laughs> you know, um, and that can be very jarring for people. So they don't do it. And we're kind of living in times like that. Now we're seeing a lot of dissension amongst, you know, family members, friends, because of different views about what's going on. And um, it, it can be painful because, you know, when you know you don't, may not see anybody anymore, it's kind of like they've died. But um, you also have to realize we're all on our own individual journey, moving ahead and progressing and it never ends. And, you know, here we are. And that's just the way it is. But um, learning how to get down to that alpha level of consciousness on command can be a real, you get to, and let me tell you some of the amazing things you can do when you know how to do that. Um, I always do it before I get in my car and go anywhere. I just automatically go into flow and tell myself that no matter what, um, everything will be harmonious. And I notice sometimes I might have a close call, you know, with another car or something, but it always works out. You know, it works out just fine. Or, you know, um, I used to do it when I was traveling using my past benefits. You know, we travel space available when we're crew members. You gals know that. And I would always, one time I was traveling with this guy and he kept saying, we're not going to get on. We're not going to get on. And I said, how can you be metaphysical and be talking like that? Of course, we're going to get on. <laughs> You know, and um, if you visualize the end results that you want, it all works out very harmoniously, but you have to believe it. Desire, belief, and expectancy are three of the key ingredients to manifesting. First of all, you've got to have a desire for what you're manifesting. If you're lukewarm about it, you got one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake, it's not going to happen because you don't have any energy in it. You're not, you're not that excited about it. Usually, we manifest sometimes, not usually, but many times when we get to that point where we've hit rock bottom and we just give up and we say, I don't know what to do now, help me. That's a very emotional time. And the way we communicate with the divine is through our feelings, not the intellect, feelings. and 
when you feel very strongly that you either desire something better or you desire a change or whatever it is, the, the message, it's like it gets through to the universe, to God, and things start to happen. But you have to really have that strong desire. And you have to believe that it will happen. It is totally possible for you to change a situation. <clears throat> I'll give you another example. I was I had three husbands and I really had a good time with all of them, but then you know, um, we all got we got we all got divorced <laughs> each time. But that's okay because we all learned something. But um one the third one was it, it was getting very difficult to be with him. And um, so one night I went to bed and I claimed my, my omnipotence because we reflect God. We, we are so powerful that we haven't even begun to tap into what we can do as humans. Some people are there, of course, and have always been on the planet using their superpowers. But um, we have been so programmed to believe that we were not capable of so many things. But this particular night I went to bed and I really declared that I was omnipotent because I reflect God and God is omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent. And we have in reflection powers that God has because he made us in his image and likeness. And I prayed for some sort of harmonious solution. Well, the next morning he got a phone call to go work in the Midwest for about two months. And he was so happy because they gave him a, um, a, a meal expense that was very lucrative, you know, generous, and he loved to eat. And um, he just loved getting, you know, so it worked out beautifully. It was like a win-win situation. And if you find yourself in a situation that doesn't seem to be harmonious, there is always a way out. That's another thing about metaphysics that um, a lot of people have trouble believing. There is always a solution, always. And sometimes it's not exactly what we would picture. Many times that's the case because God works in strange ways. So you have to be open to, oh, maybe this is the solution I've been looking for when it shows up and go for it. You know, everybody's heard that story about the guy sitting on the roof in a flood and, you know, the canoe comes by, the helicopter comes by, everybody comes by and he keeps saying, no, I'm waiting for God to save me. And, <laughs> and then when he gets to heaven, he says that and God says, well, I sent you all those, you know, things to save you and you didn't see them right? You have to see because there's a lot of people that have eyes, but they can't see and ears, but they can't hear. So you have to be able to resonate with the truth when you hear it. And that's part of why meditating is so good because it attunes you every day to be receptive and to be able to hear that inner voice, that guidance, that intuition. You know, um, the Dalai Lama said, if they took a whole generation of young people and taught them how to meditate, we would be living in a very different world. Because when you're at beta, you, you can prey on people. But when you're at the alpha level, you pr on, only pray for people. You cannot think an ugly thought when you're at the alpha level of consciousness. When you're in that subjective state, you'll pop out of it. So in order to be more kind, more loving, more, um, you know, living in the unity consciousness that we're all one, you, um, you, that's where, where the alpha level is. And that's why you get results when you go to that level of consciousness, because we're all connected. There's only one mind, one God, but we're all individual expressions of that. But because we're connected at the soul level, at the consciousness level, we can actually communicate with each other at the alpha level. And, you know, when you send out messages of what you're, you know, like I've, I had some people um, in a seminar in Denver who um, 
in a very, very bad real estate market needed to get tenants for some rental property. And people do this to sell their houses. If you send out the message that, um, you know, you have something for rent or for sale and you're just looking for the right person and you do it when you're in that relaxed, deep state, the right person will show up and get the message. And um, it's amazing how it works. And a lot of things that people think are miraculous are really natural, but we tend to not accept that miraculous things are happening all the time in that there's no way to explain it in the three-dimensional world. But in the spiritual realm, the supernatural is very natural and you can make things happen when you need to. Yogananda um, had a great statement that I, I liked. Um, he was another one. He wrote Autobiography of a Yogi and he was very, very awake. He brought meditation here to the West and um, you know, set up an ashram out in California. But he said, um, abundance is not necessarily financial wealth. Abundance is knowing that you will always have what you need when you need it. And he was able to do that. He always was manifesting exactly what he needed when he needed it, even though it looked like, you know, it just wasn't going to happen. But if you have that belief that everything is going to work out the way it's supposed to, and you have no, there's nothing that can convince you otherwise then you get results because you're expecting. Expectancy is the third thing. When you expect only good to come into your experience, it does. And you can even look at a bad situation and say, well, that didn't really work out the way I wanted it to, but you can use it as a stepping stone to get you to a higher level. You know, because in this world, we're always going to experience good and bad experiences. That's just the way it is in the 3D world. But if you can take those uh, problematic things and use them as stepping stones to redirect you and make you realize you would maybe taking a detour and get yourself to a place where um, you're breaking free of an old belief, because that's the other thing. Our beliefs are running the show. And once we understand how strong our beliefs are, um, we can re reprogram our beliefs to make them more amenable to what we're trying to get done. And, you know, they, some of the strongest beliefs are formed in the first seven years of life, because when you're a child up to about age seven, you're living more at the theta level, which is even deeper than alpha. It's more like seven cycles per second. And young children are operating more at that level of consciousness. And that's why you can tell a, a child up to age six or seven, just about anything like, you know, the Easter bunny and Santa Claus are real. And they will totally believe it because they're like sponges and they have no reason to question it. So the programming that we get in those very, very early years have a lot to do with how we operate in our adult years. And if there's something that we feel is holding us back, then we need to reprogram and reprogram and reprogram. And how do you do that? You read the right books, you watch the right kind of movies, you don't fill your mind with all kinds of negative stuff because it'll only put you back down into that negative state if you're trying to move ahead. And you just become very careful about what you fill your mind with because everything we take in is recorded. Everything. We find that out, I guess, later on. We realize we remember everything that's ever happened. So um, knowing how consciousness works is a fascinating thing because more, the more deeply you get into it, the more you realize the paradigm that we're moving into now, the new paradigm, which many people, of course, have already figured out, is that we are creating a world and we don't have to be reactionary. We can be proactive. Many people still think 
they're victims. There's nothing they can do about what's happening out there in the world. It's terrible and, you know, it depresses them and they can't change it. So it's just awful. But the reality is not to be cold hearted. It's all in your perception. If you focus on um, trying to help people raise their vibration, um, you can pray for the world. You can actually raise the vibration of the world by seeing it in a better light rather than thinking this horrible stuff that's always been going on on planet earth is never going to stop. But if you believe that your, you, your thoughts are powerful, your prayers are powerful, and you can actually change things with your consciousness, you become one of those that is moving us into a much better place on planet earth, which is exciting because there are many people that believe we are going through the great awakening. And when we come out at the other end of this, we will all be living in a much more harmonious, peaceful, happy, um, joyous way. And this has been something that's been predicted by, you know, it's biblical, it's Mayan, it's Atlantean, it's, you know, many ancient civilizations have talked about this time period. So maybe we are moving into a much more exciting, interesting way to live amongst each other. But um, the other thing I wanna talk about is scientific prayer. You, if you meditate and you start to use your creative visualization in order to visualize things that you desire, then you can also, you know, really pray about it. Science and metaphysics, the thing I love about metaphysics is that it's, it's the highest form of art because it incorporates creativity, imagination, which is art. It's also the greatest intellectual perception because you have to really dig in intellectually to find the truth sometimes and dig out these, these ideas and concepts with your intellect. And it's religious because it's based on that intimate relationship that we have with spirit and everything that is because spirit is everything. And it's scientific because it deals with law and order. There are laws governing the universe. And that's why metaphysical people if you go to a, a practitioner, <clears throat> the practitioner doesn't say to him or herself, gee, I'm not really sure if I can help this person. They're completely convicted in their belief that of course they can, because there's nothing to fix. Everybody's already perfect. And when you condition your mind to think like that, that everybody is already perfect, then it's amazing how problems start to melt away and you see a new situation emerge. But you need to go within in order to do that. And you need to hold your thought at that level of consciousness where only good is happening. And some of the things I've learned on my metaphysical journey, um, you know, is that this spirit, God, is only good. It's love that is governing the universe not hate. And that's why people that want to do really nasty things to hurt people, they can only go so far. And those who understand the laws of the universe and how to protect themselves don't really worry about those people hurting them because they know that they're protected. And, um, you know, it's kind of a losing battle when you talk about good versus evil, good will always win over evil, ultimately, ultimately. I'm not saying there's not collateral damage, but ultimately good will win over evil. Um, you know, blessings will win over cursing. It's just the law of the universe. It's a better frequency. It's a higher truth. It's, it is the truth. The rest of it is like, um, it has no power. Evil really has no power when you stand up to it. And when you, you know, when you're afraid of it, perfect love casts out fear. And once you stand up to these kinds of frightening things that 
the news tries to inflict on everyone. Um, and you, you see the truth behind it and you begin to realize we've all been programmed. Everyone, I mean, you can't help it. It doesn't matter what age you're living in. As soon as you're born, you start getting programmed by your family, your town, your country, whatever you're influenced by, because that's how you become a personality and a human being. But when you begin to understand that you don't need to be manipulated by other people, you break free and you become sovereign. And, um, you know, I'm very big on being self-governed because the reality is once you break through and you realize that you're connected to the divine, your higher self, you can get answers, you can communicate, you can have a two-way thing going on and you can solve problems, then you become self-governed. You are no longer um, living under the influence of other people's desires to manipulate you because you've broken free. And when you stand up to that, it's amazing what can happen, you know, or you'll be removed from situations because you're not, you're not meant to be there anymore. It's, you never know how it's going to work out. But if you listen to your inner guidance, you will be directed no matter what. And when you get to a point where you can look back and you can say to yourself, now I know why that happened and that happened and that happened. It all starts to make sense because um, your soul, your higher self has a plan. You came here with a plan. You came here for a purpose. And once you get attuned to what your purpose is, you have peace because everything that shows up in your life is either aligned with your purpose or it isn't. So it makes it really easy to decide what to do. You don't have to worry and fret over, should I move or should I do this or should I do that? If you know it's part of your plan and it makes sense to do that, you just, you do it. But if you're resisting, 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 and it doesn't feel good, chances are you're, you're, not, you're not working your plan. One time when I was living in New York, Gramercy Park, all by myself with my little dog, I've told this story before, but it always kind of amazed me. One morning I woke up and it was like, I kind of felt like I wasn't supposed to be in New York anymore, but I didn't really care one way or another, but I really just felt it was like a vacuum inside of me. I was sitting on the edge of my bed and I heard this male voice say to me, you are leaving New York by the end of March. It was a very commanding voice and there was nobody else in the room with me. So it was like, wow, where did that come from? And um, sure enough, I left New York by the end of March. And it wasn't my plan, but my landlord asked me to leave because he wanted to buy the co-op. And he had to get me out of the unit in order to do it by the end of March. So it tells me that the higher self, the divine, your guide, whatever you want to call it, knows exactly what's coming down the road for all of us. <laughs> And every now and then it can break through and, and give us a message. And maybe we could listen to it moment to moment if we could, you know, tap into it. I've got, I've heard that voice a few times, but not that frequently. But that just that feeling of inner guidance sometimes, you know, hearing the right message through a friend or a book or um, something else can, can put us on the path of knowing that, um, that's what you're supposed to be doing. And when you feel that and you know that you're on the right path, everything else just falls into place. So that's what I wanted to share with you. I'd like to let you know that, um, you know, I am a Silva trainer still, and I've trained over 3000 people in how to get down to that alpha level. And I notice more and more people that are in the media, like Joe Dispenza, Bruce Lipton, um, who's that other guy, um, the chiropractor, he even played Jose Silva's long relaxed meditation on one of his videos, Joe Dispenza. Um, everybody knows that you getting, shifting your thought from beta um, to just running around, you know, never going within is not so healthy. I was listening to a guy yesterday, who, they say in sports, they're starting to play the alpha sound. Well, 
um, athletes are practicing because it puts them more in flow. So, you know, everything's frequency. Tesla said that if you want to understand the universe, study vibrations, energy, and frequency. And um, that's what's going on. So the more we raise our consciousness and accept that we are, you know, much more than just our physical beings, and we're capable of so much more. And if we find a, a path to follow, it could be many different things. But, um, you know, I've found in my personal experience, I loved Gurdjieff, I loved, you know, Yogananda, I like the Christian mystics. I got, I, you know, I think Jesus was the master teacher and really taught us how to free ourselves. And he was always telling everyone when he spoke, you can do the same things too, and even more. But then people, I guess, have a hard time believing that. And it is hard to believe sometimes, but I do think we're all capable of doing just amazing things. And the more we desire it, the more it shows up in our life. And when you're ready, the teacher appears. I've found that to be true in my life. So to wrap it up, um, did, it, did anybody get like that? I mean, did you get anything out of that? Yeah, yeah, good, good. Well, um, yeah, what I'm gonna do now is um, tell you, I'm, I'm gonna be doing um, every Thursday, I'm going to be doing a membership um, and um, to launch it, I'm making a big offer of everything um, in the membership. Here it is on the screen. Um, the membership meets every um, Thursday and it's gonna be one o'clock probably in the afternoon, no, two o'clock Eastern time still and um every thursday and we're going to talk about and share so people can work on things that they're working on too in that membership and get results and then um i have a course that i just put out thanks to ari she helped me um put it in kajabi which is a site where <clears throat> you can put courses and they really did a nice job, but it's called the mega manifestation method. And in that course, I have the long relax and the short relax to get you down to the alpha level. And I also have a lot of insights into spiritual healing and, um, you know, different aspects of manifesting in different categories, like abundance relationships and, um, I have a course that came out on Udemy about five years ago that sells every month. It's called Metaphysics Made Easy. So I decided to upgrade and do this new course, which goes into it a little more deeply. And that's called the Mega Manifestation Method. And then I also have my book, Secrets of a Metaphysical Flight Attendant, that came out <clears throat> a few years ago. And that sells every month on Amazon or Balboa Press, who the people that published it. And um, people enjoy that. So that's what I'm offering. And I'm going to make an offer of um, to everybody who's on this um, call. Normally that weekly membership, they char usually charge about $97 a month for a weekly membership. And the email support, you can email me anytime with questions is normally 47 a month. The Mega Manifestation course is usually $4.97. And the signed book, it's a hardcover book signed, which is normally $47, would be a total of $688. And I'm including all of that for um, a special offer of $27 a month, everything. So that's the offer, and it ends Sunday night. So um, if anybody wants to do that, you get the course, which is a download, and it's it's really a good course. I, I think it's pretty interesting, and um, the monthly membership, and um, they take place on Zoom, and they're always recorded, so $27 a month. That's it. Does anyone have any questions? Let me see this. Oh, 
hi, Rebecca. I was just thinking, oh my gosh, that's like so amazing. Like I was, I didn't, I didn't know what you were going to charge, but 27, I'm definitely signing up for that. I mean, and how much better is it for us to just be in communion with our tribe, people that have our same energy, our same frequency, and just feeding our soul. And that's what I'm all about right now. And I just think this is like the perfect timing. So thank you. I want to thank you personally for this and can't wait to sign up. Great. Thanks. Yeah. I was holding this up. It's sitting right here. What do you have? Your book. Oh, great. You've had it for a while, right? Yeah. Um, I've met a flight attendant. I'll have to tell you about privately. I have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> wow. But yeah. Um, no, this is a great offer. I asked Ariana to put it in the chat and she did so great oh good good yeah good yeah it is because um i mean where do you get a course and a book and a a membership for 27 dollars? but you know this is my first um zoom pres webinar to launch this course and everything so you know i'm just getting started with it so it's a good opportunity yeah yeah that actually ties into the question that uh, i had rebecca because you know I was wondering because you know I'm still young. I my consciousness is a little bit higher than some of the people my age. So, you know, aside from like joining a membership community, like what other advice would you give to someone who maybe feels like alone in the spiritual journey? Well, yeah, I'll tell you something. When I had that awakening situation happen in my mid twenties. I had a woman who was much more advanced, very advanced spiritually um, on retainer for probably about five years. Because, you know, if you have a spiritual awakening, you keep getting mesmerized by the 3D world. And there's a lot to learn in the, in the higher realms of consciousness. And you really do need someone that can work with you usually or a group or an organization. Everybody's different in what they're attracted to. You know, um, some people like to go to a yoga ashram. Some people like to go to a Christian church. Some people, you know, are into Judaism. It doesn't matter. All paths lead to the same place. But it is important to find people, especially when you're young um, and you're just starting because you haven't had life experience yet you know, you're still younger and more experienced people who have been there, done that can many times be very, very helpful for younger people. I just wish there was more of this taught in the school systems. You know, I do believe that if young people um, in high school were getting um, training in, in meditation and how to think and create a visualization, the Silva training was taught in co at college level in, in the early seventies. And it was very, very popular, but um, for some reason they had a big, made a big deal out of teaching meditation in the schools for a while. Now they call it mindfulness. They finally let it come in. There was a movie producer, um, David Lynch, I think his name is very famous producer who started meditating that changed his whole life. He went from being stressed out all the time to feeling good. So he, he really wanted to promote it in the schools and he found they just wouldn't let him go in and, you know, allow it. But then he got it in a few schools, you know, he started promoting it. But um, yeah, I mean, people, people need to know how their minds work in order to operate in this three-dimensional world. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? No. Yeah, that was really so good. What are you going to do on Thursdays, Rebecca? Well, um, on Thursdays, what we're going to do is cover different metaphysical topics um, relating to manifesting, healing, um, and, um, you know, there's tons of stuff to cover. Um, related to these topics and um, and then let people that are in the membership, if there's something specifically they're working on and they want to get help, 
you know, you can, when you get two or more people together with the power of intention or the power of prayer or whatever you want to call it, things happen. And when you work with each other on these, um, you know, you could call it a mastermind, you could call it whatever you want to call it. But um, when people come together with, to help each other, they get results. So yeah, that, that would be part of it. But I'd also be covering a lot of um, techniques that people can use to um, heal themselves, to manifest, to free themselves if they're interested in awakening, that sort of thing. Yeah. So are you going to do like some silver techniques then? Do the countdown yes. and yes, stuff. Yes, I, I would. I would bring in some some of the silver techniques and um, some other things that I know. You know, I'm also a certified tapping into wealth coach. Tapping is another technique that is very very effective to raise your vibration, to solve a problem. You know, to go from one state of mind that you might not want to be in to a better state. Tapping is very effective. When you just tap your face, it makes a big difference if you reprogram as you're doing it. Yeah. So I have a few things that I'd be talking about, but um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's really good, Rebecca, because, you know, you talked today like about meditation and like scientific prayer. And I feel like that really is good for people like on the introverted side, but yeah. Yeah, you know, I like to talk to people and connect. So I think having that sense of community is uh, really important nowadays, especially now because like, you know, we have the internet and it's so much easier to connect with people. So having something consistent is, is really good. So that's awesome. Yeah, I know I did live seminars all over the country for five solid years and it was great. But I, you know, it, you don't know what you're going to run into anymore with them. Um, all the restrictions and it's getting harder and harder to guarantee you're going to get on that airplane because they're canceling a lot. You know, it was pretty easy when I started teaching in 2004 till 2009, I was traveling from California and Seattle to Florida and the East coast doing these seminars every weekend. Um, but it's just not that easy anymore to do that. So um, doing it on zoom though is, I find is, you know, the more you do Zoom, the more you get used to it. But I'm wondering if there's people here that um, didn't sign up and give their email, maybe do we want them to fill out that, that, um, that so they can get the uh, replay? Yeah, so just so that everyone knows, uh, the replay is going to be on uh, Rebecca's YouTube later as well. So I'll, oh, put right. link, I'll put the link for that um, down below. If you subscribe to it, it's going to be uploaded um, later in the day. Um, so I'll do that. Good, good. Yeah. Okay. In the meantime, Rebecca, how about you tell everyone like, um, like what happens if they cancel the membership? Like what will happen? Oh, you can, yeah, you can cancel anytime. Not a problem. Yeah. You would just send an email and cancel. So that's not a problem. So yeah, for $27, you get the book, the course, um, you know, the membership, as long as you want it. Um, it, it will be $27 a month, but like I say, you can cancel anytime. So um, that's the deal. And what if they miss a meeting? Is there a um, Well, it's always recorded. Yeah. So the recording, and you can always, you know, via email, ask, questions that you might want to be addressed during the meeting you could even do it if you, you know you don't necessarily want anyone to know that that's you asking the question you could do it confidentially and we could cover things like that so um yeah it'll be it'll be really interesting because you know when people of like mind come together amazing things happen i've seen it over and over again i used to get amazing emails from people after they'd take that silver workshop like one night a woman called me up and she said oh my god i'm driving back to new hampshire i just got a phone call and somebody offered me my dream job and uh, another woman went to her condo in connecticut and she was single the bachelor that lived in one of the units 
came and knocked on her door with a pizza and they dated for about a year. And um, one woman had spots on her lungs and she had been going to the doctor and she went back to the doctor and she said, I can't believe it. The spots were all gone. I mean, and, and I see her on, she, and she used to text me every year, you changed my life. You know, amazing things can happen to people. And, you know, the more you um, tune in to that level of consciousness where you can do amazing things and you believe it and you accept it and you get programmed to be able to live like that instead of in a negative state, things start to happen. Yeah. And um, it's exciting. Rebecca, um, Rashmi asked a really good question in the chat, and I'm actually really curious about this answer. Do you want to talk? Do you want to say the question, Rashmi? Hi. Yes. Uh, really enjoyed this, Rebecca. Thank you for doing this today. Um, I'm glad I jumped on this, Ari. Um, great that you invited us all. <laughs> um, yeah. So my question is, um, well, first of all, I wanted to check because I, I I jumped on a little bit later. So did you train through Mind Valley, by the way, because you're talking about um, Oh, vision. Yes. Yeah, vision. Yeah. I'll tell you how it, how it happened. Um, in 2004, I surrendered after looking for something to do for two years. And mm -hmm. I went to a bookstore in Rhode Island and bought a lot of books because they were all on sale. And I bought more books than I normally would have because they were half price. I thought, what the heck? And I read this book, Silva Mind Control, when I got home. And they were looking for trainers. Well, for some reason, I ended up on the phone with Vishen. He was living in New York City and they were just relaunching the Silva Ultramind training because Jose Silva had passed away in 1999 and it had been dormant. And somehow I found it. And Vishen was a trainer. I, was, I became a trainer. And we started at the same time, but he was the marketing, also the marketing person for Silva Ultramind. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. for five years. I used to give seminars with him in New York City. And um, that's how he got Mind Valley started. Oh, how wonderful. We really are in the presence of celebrity here. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I was going to ask you a my question. Himself. Yeah, really? right. he, he's done very well. He really and, has, yes. Yeah. And he gives credit, he gives total credit to the Silva training, which he, he got when yeah. he was young and he learned how to program his mind for success. Yeah, I've heard of him speak about it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was asking, so do you find nowadays that people are more open to this concept of blending spirituality with science? Yes, yes. I think people are starting to realize through quantum physics, which has been around for quite a while, you know, Maxwell Planck, I guess, was, he said matter isn't real. And really, you know, spirituality is, is very scientific. Because if you believe that these laws that all the masters talk about are real, there is, they're, they're accurate, like, the laws of physics, you know, it's just that they're invisible. <laughs> they can't measure them as with, um, you know, with tools that they can measure physical laws with, but they're all very real and accurate. And um, there's always that mystery because you never, you always wonder, is this gonna, you know, but then once you get confident about spirituality working. See, spirituality and science, I think you have to combine them because it is scientific. These are laws that are governing the universe. But the spiritual part is you have to work on yourself. You have to become a better person. And all the great masters, that's what they told people. You know, you can't just walk around in, in that lower level of consciousness. Exactly. Yeah, and, I'm and, so glad you're saying this. We're yeah. on the same page. Oh, good, good. <laughs> um, my background is science, but I'm spiritual at heart. I always have been born, uh -huh. born up as a Hindu, but my background is uh, I'm a dentist, but also a hypnotherapist. So what you're saying <laughs> really resonates with me, talking yeah. about frequency, resonating, the language is about sound. And um, I am so passionate about this subject. 
I was over this last year while I joined the SER group I was back I joined it when it was KBB by the way oh and I've had this time for reflection and on my own personal growth and I realized as a scientist and as and believing in spirituality rather than organized religion let's put it that way um I thought there's no word to describe both there wasn't a word was there so I created one. <laughs> oh, great. What is this? Experience. Experience. So it's basically science and spirituality and the individual experience of both. I've created a Facebook group, um, a page for it. So I just thought people who are from both sides can mm -hmm. have an arena to discuss and share and show both sides of the arguments because oh. it is part of the same two sides of the same coin i think absolutely absolutely <laughs> oh i think they blend together beautifully because um well that woman i mentioned mary baker Eddy, she wrote her book it came out in 1875 and she calls it science and health with key to the scriptures oh. and it's interesting that that word science came to her to call, name her book, Science and Health, because it's all about using the divine laws, the science of, of Christianity in order to heal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just that science hasn't caught up with the tools to prove everything. That's how I see it. You know, that right. we, we, in my line of work, everything's evidence-based. You know, we come from that side. It's, it's to be taken seriously. But as a result, now we've hypnosis hypnotherapy there's so much evidence out there so much oh. so lucky so there's there's a lot of proof there but it's yeah. catching up with other things i have a book here i don't know if you're aware of this uh david hamilton um he was actually interviewed by uh joe dispenser as well last year oh what is why woo woo works why oh. woo woo works i would recommend that surprising science behind meditation reiki crystals and other alternative practices. I'm not on commission, by the way. <laughs> okay. I like that. Thank you for sharing that. I'm writing it down. I love You're to write things like that. I'd love to know what your feedback yeah. is. Well, you know, like Joe Dispenza talks a lot about the placebo effect. And, yes, you know, placebo, that, yeah. that's, that's very real. We have placebo. We have nocebo, nocebo as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. But, you know, now what Jose Silva got was that in 1998, he announced mankind is moving into the next phase of human evolution. So it's natural now for us to start to understand more of our abilities, I think. Yes. Awesome. So we're about done here. You know, we want to respect people's times in case they have another meeting to run to. So just really quick, everyone, I'm going to put that link for the special offer in the chat. So be sure to click that so that it opens in another tab before we end this meeting here. But um, yeah, again, the recording will be on uh, Rebecca's channel. And just know that that offer does end on Sunday. So after that date, all those prices are going to be going back up. So I yeah, hope to see a lot of you guys at the membership. Um, we're forming a nice community. I know I'll be there. So hope to see a lot of your smiling faces. But but yeah, I think we're going to end it here. So thank you, Rebecca. This was awesome. Yeah, well, really thank you everyone for coming. I really enjoyed sharing with you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Awesome. Bye, everyone. Bye.